This is Jordan Tower with JT News. True Life and Prodigy have squashed their beef. If you don't remember back in, or maybe you're too young to remember, but back in 99, True Life and Prodigy started some problem, and they had a beef ever since. Like throughout the 2000s, they were going back and forth at each other. True Life was always coming at Prodigy. And, you know, it was a big thing on the DVD. So recently... Uh, They met up this week and they kind of squashed their beef. Now, this beef all stems from back when I was in like early high school, middle school days in 99 when True Life, I guess, was just starting his career and had a he had a deal with like Sony or something. And they paid Prodigy to be on this song with uh, True Life, Prodigy, Cool G Rap, When You're a Thug. They paid Prodigy for his verse. He did his verse. But then Prodigy reused the verse on the Any Given Sunday soundtrack with, you know, the Mob Deep Never Going Back song. Same exact verse. And this happened a lot back then. Like, you know, people would reuse verses because think about it. He did that verse for True Life. And like morally, you shouldn't reuse the verse. You got paid for it. You laid it down. Or maybe you didn't get paid for it. Who knows? You know, because True Life was the new up and coming rapper at the time. Maybe Prodigy just threw him a verse. But still, True Life looked at it as disrespect, whether he paid for it or not. You know, you gave me this verse, then you reuse it on a a soundtrack that everyone's going to hear. So this verse is worthless now. So basically, you know, True Life took it to another level. Now, this happened a lot back then because, you know, think about it. If a big, you know, soundtrack comes to you and they want want, uh, a song, they're going to pay probably five to ten times more than you got paid from True Life. So he quickly just came up with, you know, he reused that verse. That had, now, Prodigy's not the only one that did that. And Mob Deep, think about it, in 99, like, I, for some of you that can't imagine this, imagine Mob Deep, like, the top, top five rappers. You had Jay-Z, Mob Deep. Mob Deep was just as big as Jay-Z and Nas back then. They were unstoppable. They had, you know, the, the, they had all, the streets on lock. They, they were it. Mob Deep was the the shit, you know. And then uh, I think that's around the time Prodigy had his solo uh, HNIC out. He was on fire, you know what I mean? So, like, when you're on fire like that, you feel untouchable. But here's where you mess up. If you just disrespect somebody that is, is just starting and has nothing to lose, like True Life did at that time. Think about it. True Life's a new rapper just trying to start his career. And he's from the streets, from Lower East Side. Prodigy's from Queens, Queensbridge, and you disrespect him like that, and he has nothing to lose, he's coming for you. So what happened was True Life was trying to catch Prodigy, and I guess Muggs or something from Cypress Hill had a session that Mob Deep was supposed to be at, but really infamous Mob, Mob Deep's crew, was at the session, and I think Jizza was there, and you know True Life and them ran up in the studio, and they stripped the Mob Deep members, not not Prodigy and Havoc, because they weren't there at the time, but their crew stripped them down, made them go home with no clothes. They didn't really violate Jizza from Wu Tang or or uh, Mugs from Cypress Hill, but they violated the Queens cats that were down with Mob Deep, and that kind of escalated the whole beef. And then you hear see on the beef DVD, Mob Deep and wouldn't even address the issue. Uh, because, you know, it wasn't there, you know, they weren't going to like give light to that situation, but you know, that was a ongoing thing, you know, true life. You probably know him from having beef with Jim Jones for all those years on DVDs, but you know, prodigy was always thrown in the mix. So I guess recently, um, you know, uh, Ron Artest, who's from the same hood as mob deep Queensbridge is trying to be a peacemaker and brought them all together and you know they're making peace i mean you know they're older now it's kind of corny at this point to be in your 40s having beef with each other you know you're a little too old for that that's more of like a young a young thing where you you're not really thinking about and having life in perspective so they squashed the beef you know true life tweeted out uh part of a Becoming a man is being able to learn how to re- reconcile the differences. You know, thank you, God, for allowing me to do this. And thanks to Metal World Peace and a couple of his homies for uh, making it happen. So, you know, they, they all got together and uh, pieced out the beef. But, you know, 
No, I don't really care. I mean, who cares? And they weren't going to do anything to each other anyways. Nothing really bad happened. You know, that one time in the studio that happened. In True Life, he even said on the Beef DVD he regretted doing that. He just kind of acted on emotion and was kind of ashamed of acting like that. You know, he should probably put the... You should have kept it on wax and got at him a different way, you know, just attacking his career or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, I guess that beef's over with, and th- that's a positive thing. We could we, we could be positive, too, out here. So they're they're cool now, and uh, let's see if True Life and uh, Jim Jones can uh, fix their beef. Uh, last I heard Jim Jones in The Breakfast Club, he said, nah. So, you know, and Jim Jones pretty much sticks to his guns with stuff like that. So, uh, anyways signing off.